During the brutal winters of World War II, soldiers fought not only against the enemy, but against temperatures that froze rifles solid, cracked canteens, and turned rations into blocks of ice. Yet deep in the Eastern Front and the Ardennes, a handful of engineers devised a field heating method so efficient that it defied all logic keeping bunkers warm for days, using almost no fuel, no open flame, and no smoke trail to reveal their position. The method worked so well that after the war it quietly disappeared from official manuals, buried under decades of modern heating technology and classified field reports. What made this erased technique so effective, and why was it hidden? Stay with this to the end, and you'll not only understand the science behind it, but also learn how it can still be recreated safely today. Before we dive in, subscribe to In the Beginning, where history's most ingenious forgotten ideas are brought back to life. The battlefield problem that forced soldiers to innovate. By the winter of 1942, troops on both sides were dying from exposure almost as fast as from combat. Fires were forbidden in forward positions. The smoke would betray a camp's location instantly. Even inside trenches, heat escaped so quickly that frostbite became unavoidable. Traditional stoves consumed too much fuel, and the metal chimneys glowed faintly at night under infrared scopes. Commanders demanded a silent, smokeless heating solution that could be built with whatever materials were on hand. Field engineers from Germany, Finland, and the Soviet Union began experimenting independently with what later became known as subterranean radiant heating, or what soldiers nicknamed the thermal trench. The design redirected the heat and exhaust from small stoves or lanterns through a concealed tunnel of clay and metal, transforming toxic exhaust into gentle, radiant warmth. How the erased thermal trench system actually worked. At its core, the method was both simple and ingenious. Soldiers dug a shallow channel, often no wider than a helmet, running from the bunker's exterior to its interior. At the entrance, a small fire pit or stove burned wood, charcoal, or even dried animal dung. But instead of venting the smoke directly into the air, the engineers covered the trench with flat stones or scrap metal, sealed it with wet clay, and led the tunnel under the floor of their shelter. As the hot air and smoke Pass through this buried conduit, the earth around it absorbed the heat and radiated it upward into the bunker above. By the time the air reached the far end of the tunnel, often venting through a disguised outlet or chimney hidden under brush, the smoke had cooled enough to become invisible. The result was a room that stayed warm for hours sometimes overnight, with no visible flame, no glowing metal and minimal fuel consumption. This principle mirrored what modern engineers now call a rocket mass heater, or thermal mass radiator. But it was discovered accidentally by freezing soldiers desperate for survival. They used clay not only to seal in heat, but also to filter out carbon gases, effectively creating a primitive air purification and insulation system. 
So why was it erased from official manuals after the war? Well, after the Second World War ended, both Allied and Soviet militaries took a close look at the captured engineering notes and bunker schematics. What they discovered was, honestly, rather alarming. Many of these underground heating systems operated perilously close to the limits of carbon monoxide safety. Just a few miscalculations, like using the wrong soil type or, you know, sealing the vent a bit too tightly, could lead to suffocation. There were, in fact, several reports from 1943 to 44 that documented units found dead in their sleep, their bunkers sealed tight while their fires still smouldered outside. To prevent that kind of tragedy from happening again, later editions of field manuals simply left out the designs altogether. The technology, you see, was just too effective to ignore, but at the same time it was far too dangerous to distribute without some pretty rigorous training. By the 1950s, new portable stoves and safer exhaust systems had taken its place. But honestly, the ingenuity of that wartime version remained unmatched when it came to heat efficiency and stealth. Now, the hidden science behind its remarkable heat retention power is quite fascinating. The secret wasn't only in the trench itself, but also in the materials used. Wet clay, when packed tightly, serves as both a heat sink and an insulator. It absorbs those high temperatures from the exhaust gases and then, you know, releases that energy gradually over time. Soldiers even improved this effect by mixing ash and sand into the clay, which stopped it from cracking and actually improved the airflow. Some even lined the first section of the trench with scrap metal or spent shell casings, which acted as early heat exchangers. This layered combination, fire, metal, clay and soil, created a natural thermal battery. Long after the external fire was extinguished, the ground continued to radiate heat. How this same wartime principle can still be applied today. For survivalists and homesteaders, the underlying concept is far from obsolete. The same radiant trench design can be adapted safely for use in modern shelters, greenhouses or off-grid cabins, provided proper ventilation and safety measures are followed. Start by digging a shallow trench leading from an external fire pit toward the interior of your shelter. Line the base with stones or scrap metal then cover it with another layer of stones and seal the top with a thick clay mixture. At the entrance, use a small rocket stove or fire chamber that directs hot air into the trench. Allow the exhaust to travel beneath the shelter floor before exiting through a vent on the opposite side, covered with mesh to prevent blockage. When built correctly, this creates a steady, smokeless warmth that lasts long after the fire is out. Modern builders replicate this same principle in earth-sheltered homes and passive heating systems, proving that wartime necessity often predates modern efficiency by decades. What makes this discovery historically significant is, well, this erased technique was more than a field fix. It was a glimpse into how necessity breeds innovation under pressure. It merged ancient architectural knowledge with battlefield engineering, 
showing that even in war, human creativity sought life over destruction. The soldiers who built these systems were not just fighting the cold. They were rediscovering thermal science that modern sustainability experts now celebrate. If this kind of buried history fascinates you, the kind where forgotten wartime ingenuity shapes the technology we use today, then subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video with fellow history enthusiasts. The past still hides knowledge that modern manuals overlook, and each rediscovered method brings us closer to understanding how resilience and resourcefulness truly shaped survival.